All right, it's time for us to finally start getting into some asynchronous programming, uh, specifically uh, sending some HTTP requests to a server. Uh, now, for uh, the main project, I've created a full backend database, uh, seeded that database, and sort of like set everything up. But we can use that for uh, the next few lessons with uh, HTTP uh, it, by, hit, by actually hitting the server and sort of exploring around what that looks like in, uh, in Rust and U. However, in order to do that, we need to spin up our server first. So that's the reason why we have Docker set up for us. I'm looking right now at a uh, Docker Compose file. So if you're not familiar with Docker Compose, it's basically a configuration file that allows you to spin up um, several different Docker containers uh, together at the same time. Uh, this file is in the root of the uh, course directory. So if you fork the if you fork it, uh, clone that down to your own system, uh, CD into it, uh, you should be in the same directory as the Docker Compose file. So, for example, if I do D dir, uh, we'll see a Docker Compose dot yml file right here. And that lets us know that it's the correct directory. Now, there's one more sort of thing to be aware of, which is each service here has a profile that I've set up for it. Database, you notice, does not have a profile. That means every command that we run, you know, to bring up the uh, all the services, the database will be included in that. But we have also other things like um, uh, a, a Vue.js version of the project that has already been done that you can compare against. Uh, we don't need that running right now, so we don't need to run any of these profiles. Uh, we have a Node.js Express API. Um, that's what we're going to be running today. And that is under the profile Node.js Express. So we'll notice that database will launch with that. The Node.js Express service will launch with that. And also the API test service will launch with that. So this will automatically run all the tests and let us know that our API is or is not working properly. Let's go ahead and uh, get this going. So I'm going to copy, I'm going to copy this. Uh, we're going to do a, uh, and let's see, it's going to be Docker compose um, dash dash profile. Node.js Express up. If you haven't run this before, it's uh, first going to pull down all of the uh, all the images that are necessary. For example, it's pulling down what it needs to run the database. It's also going to build any images that are necessary. Uh, then it's going to launch them, and there's a specific order that it launches them too. So it order it launches the database first. Uh, sets up the database, seeds it, uh, and then after that's done, it launches the uh, the API. And then after the API is launched, it launches the test. Both, um, while they're all on their own individual, you know, containers, uh, they're on the same network, so they can communicate with each other. I've also had the database expose port 5432, so if you want to uh, connect to that database externally, then uh, then you can sort of like to to play around with it and you know see see what's inside. All right, so we have our uh, backend listening. So the API is listening on port three thousand here. Uh, the tests are about to start, um, and they sort of just all uh, explode onto the screen as soon as they're done. Um, but if we wanted to actually like try sending a message here. Uh, let's go take a look at um, uh, do, where is it in here? Uh, integration tests, backend tests, API test. So I'm going to go ahead and just fold everything. Um, this is a great way for us to sort of explore how um, how our how the backend really works and what um, what like kind of routes we can call and how we need to call them. Uh, I am using Axios as part of this. So if you are familiar with JavaScript and Axios, this should be very familiar. And the tests are all written in jest. 
Uh, okay, so I want to, for this create user function here, uh, we can see that uh, we do an axios.post, so we send a post message to our API slash users. Um, our base URL is, let's see right here, um, whatever our like, you know, local host, uh, port 3000 slash API slash V1. So to create a user, it would be localhost colon 3000 slash API slash V1 slash users. Uh, and then we need to send it a username and a password as JSON. And then we should be able to get some some stuff back out of that. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's make sure that the tests all ran. And everything is good. Uh, they did. So here's all that output. Uh, if you get a bunch of X's here, that does mean that something went wrong and uh, uh, the API is not working correctly or the test can't connect to the API. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and load up a Thunder client, which allows us to send uh, HTTP requests right here in VS Code. I'm gonna do a new request. We're gonna do a post. And we're just going to send something to our, um, uh, we're gonna create our user uh, and sort of like just play around to see what it looks like. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go to HTTP, localhost, 3000, API v1 users. Uh, now for headers, we need to send JSON. So I'm gonna send a content type. And we want this to be application JSON. And then over here in body, we're gonna send, well, JSON. And we need a username. Uh, this can be anything. So I'm just gonna type Brooks. And a password. Um, I don't have any requirements for how complex the password needs to be or how long. So I'm just gonna make that a lovely simple one, two, three, four. Uh, okay, so I send that. Um, oh, username is already taken because I've already done this and I didn't reset the database. Uh, so that means, uh, let's just do like Brooks, Brooks two, one, two, three, four. I'll send this and okay, this is what we get back. We get an object back with a data key. And then inside of that, we have uh, the new ID of the user, the username, and a JSON web token that can be used for authenticating uh, secure routes, maybe like getting all the to-dos or getting information about, um, um, about a to-do, marking it done, things like that. Anyways, uh, this is the introduction to the API. Uh, if you want to sort of explore more, uh, the, the tests in this api.test.js file uh, should uh, covers pretty much every action that, uh, that we would need to do in the to-do application. Uh, and so you can sort of like see, see what's happening there. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, going into HTTP requests. Uh, bye.